What's up, guys? It's Trevor here with Trevor Talks with Lacey Sturm. How are you feeling today? I am sleepy and excited about the show, but I didn't get much sleep last night, so. I got 12 hours of sleep, so I have you beat a little bit there. I'm really proud of you. It's hard for people they sleep 12 hours, you know? They're always like, I have to get up and do things, but I think it's really good for your soul. It is good for my soul, but I'm super excited to be sitting here with you. You just released a new project, Reflect Love Back. I personally love it. I know that there are probably hundreds of thousands of people that will get their hands on this content, whether it's the album, the 12 week video series. Tell us about it. Like, what inspired this? You write books, you make music, you were in one of the most successful bands. Every single time I look on YouTube for the most successful vocalists in a band, you're in the top 10. <laughs> and it's amazing. Just tell us a little bit about Reflect Love Back, the album, the series. What can we expect? Well, it's funny you're talking about the success p part of, you know, what it, it looks like for you to look up stuff that we do. Because when I did my third book, like the first book was about my, I wrote the reason about my, um, how God rescued me from suicide at 16 from an atheist to a believer in God that, you know, he's real. And I had an encounter with him. So if you don't believe, I just can say I, I saw him. He's real. God's real. I wrote a book about it, The Reason. And then the second one is the thing I wanted to say. It's like, what would you say when I was writing? You're writing a book right now, right? Yeah. yeah. So I heard somebody say, if you could say one thing to the world, what would you say? That's what you should write about. Mm -hmm. So the first thing was salvation. The second thing is um, about how romance can derail your life right after. <laughs> yeah. And so the things, the way that romance derailed my life in a lot of ways and then how God – you know, I was back in a suicidal place over that, and then he rescued me out of that, and that's the mystery. Now I met Josh, and we've been married 11 years now, and it's crazy. God's way really. Three beautiful kids. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then the third book, I, the third thing I wanted to say to everybody was about your calling and about what are we called to do. And sometimes it's such a wrestle of, like, I don't know what my purpose is or what I'm called to do. And I have kids, you know, people, fans ask me all the time, how did you get to become a rock star? And I, I can't just say a formula, but I can also say a formula. <laughs> um, for me, it's like I wrote about it in The Return, which mm -hmm. is Reflections on Loving God Back is what it, the subtitle is. So it's, a, it's, it's really based on that idea of, of the parable of the talents and how God said, you know, the kingdom is like um, a, 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 a rich man who – who invested talents in people. And he said, I gave one guy three talents, one guy two talents, and one guy one talent. And talent is the word they use, obviously, um, in the old in the, the language, it actually means money. So he's talking about this is an investment. He's using financial mm -hmm. language, but when we read it now, we, we think of a talent like whatever gift you have. And it's the same thing. It's like, I've given you this. I've invested this in you. What are you going to do with it? And... Um, and so the first, you know, two people, they actually double their their gift. They double what they got, and then they bring it back to the, the guy. And he's like, good job. Well done. You were faithful with a little bit. Now I'm going to give you more. And the last one was like, well, I was afraid. You know, I know you're, you're hard and you're a scary guy, so I just kind of hid your money in case I lost it. So here it is. I'm going to get back to you. And he's like, you're wicked and lazy, and give, t give me the money and give it to the guy who has 10, who gained all the, the more. And so – so what does it look like to just take what's right in front of you? What do you have right in front of you? And how can you bring that to God and be like, what can you do with this? Can you do something with it? I mean, if you can't, I, I, you know, that's the whole thing. I never wanted to be a rock star. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, I, I feel like I had borrowed time after God rescued me from suicide. Like I was, should be dead. I'm still alive. Why would he care about my life? And so I'm like, I didn't really like music particularly because my mom was a musician and we grew up in poverty because of it. So I had this angst towards music, musicians in general, like musicianry. And um, I was like, but I can play guitar after I heard that, that scripture. I was like, well, I'll, I'll pray, write songs for you in my room. You know, you want to use them? You want to make you happy? I'll write them for you. Because I love, because the Lord loved me so completely, like so obvious that he's, a, a, he's love. When you encounter God, you know he's love. And what you your response is that you want to love him back. And, you know, people always hear these stories about 
or the, the message, God loves you so much, God loves you so much. And that's true, but Jesus said the first and most important commandment is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it, we we don't want to hang out with somebody that we think is this terrifying being that um, is, you know, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is one of the things we're exploring in Reflective Back right now is, um, my friend Bill says he's not like that creepy Santa Claus that's got a list and you, you know he's checking it twice. <laughs> yeah, he says. Um, and if you if you if you think of God that way, you're not going to want to hang out with him. You're just going to want to save your soul from burning because he's terrifying, and you're going to hide all your gifts and be like, oh, yeah. but if you know that he's good and he actually has plans for you, when you actually pursue to know God, you find that he's he's good, that he loves us. And your response is that you want to love him back. You're just like, we can't give him anything, but we can love him back. And that's crazy. So that's what the whole thing is about the return. And then, you know, um, with Reflecting Love Back, the the devotional series, I, re I really wanted people to learn how to stand on their own feet with their faith. Because so many people walk away from God because of something someone said or something a pastor did or something they heard you know, they, they got conflicting messages. They watched the church fight with each other. And I'm like, you know what? The way that I followed Jesus was not because my church was perfect. Actually, right after I became a Christian, I had a terrible, abusive situation happen with somebody in the church. And I should have never walked back in the doors if that's what I based my relationship with God on. But I was like, you know what? I know people are screwed up. And I don't trust. I'm a smart aleck. So I don't know. If you say it's in the Bible, where? And show me. I want to read it. You know, like well, you're saying that, but where is it? Let me see. I want to read it. That's right. And so that's actually what we should. That's why we all have it accessible to us. When a pastor says to you, open your Bibles to Mark 4, blah, blah, blah. He's not trying to make you feel guilty for not having your Bible. He's not trying to make you feel proud of yourself. Yeah, I brought my Bible. I know where that is. He's saying, I'm not making this up. It's in there. And if I got it out of context, then read it for yourself. And so that is the most empowering thing to me to know that God invites us to know him individually. And that when we come to commune, I mean, there's a scripture about communion at church. When we come together, we shouldn't come hungry. We should come with, you know, with something to share. And so people, like, leave churches because all oh, these people, they don't get me, blah, 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 whatever. But then actually the truth is you are the church. Mm -hmm. So when you go in, you actually shift the culture yourself. I mean, if God leads you somewhere else, great. But, but you have Christ in you. And you have a scripture and the words of the scripture to help know if you're going towards Christ or away. And so I really want to empower people to know the scripture. Mm -hmm. So I try to make it real simple because people don't want to read because they're so busy and they're always on their mm -hmm. phones. And so when you're always on your phone, you can just, we made it where you can just push play. Yeah. And you can watch somebody say the scripture to you directly right into the camera. It's like they're telling you a story. And so that helps me remember when somebody looks me in the eye and tells me something, I feel like I can remember it better. So I, I, I try to do the scriptures that way. And there's so there's commentaries and scriptures, and it's a 12-week devotional to teach you how to meet with God in the morning and the evening. In Psalm 1, it says, if you meditate on my word day and night, everything you do will be successful. And if, and if I could tell you Flyleaf Secret to Success, that was, I read that and I took it seriously. <laughs> and that's what I did. Every, you know, morning and evening, we started with a scripture. And we saw God bless that. It's just true. <laughs> so anyway, I want to teach people to do that. So that's why it's a 12-week devotional. It gives you a morning and evening to meet with God. You just push play. And there's a journal that goes with each video. So um, I try to make it as easy as I could. So lots of, lots of people have gone through it already. Mm -hmm. And so we switched the model up to where it's like a, now it's a subscription thing. So it was like... A little more affordable as well for people. Right. It is, it's more affordable, but also um, there's new content every mm. month. So for the people that already went through it, but you can always go through it if you want to, if you need to figure, if you need help um, developing a habit of meeting with God in the morning and at night, it's, and you're on your phone a lot, then you can just push play and you can meet with them that way. So I, I don't know. And even if people don't have time to watch the video, they can actually turn it on in their car. They can listen to the audio. They can go through it, whether they're at work, at home. It's just so amazing that you've taken the time out of your day to invest in people in such a profound way. There's not a lot of people out there that are making 12-week devotionals, taking the time to record all of that. 
and doing it for, and it's not even about the money, but it's, it's so cheap to like learn so much out of the knowledge that you've gained over the years. The last time I saw you, you were studying on a tour bus. You were raising two kids at the time. You were pregnant, headbanging on stage every night, living the rock star life and going to college and writing a book at the same time. And I was just like, <laughs> I want to be as consistent and I want to work as hard as you. Like that is amazing. <laughs> and so that's funny how you viewed it and i was gonna say that's where we vi recorded the videos was on tour yeah. and 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 the thing is it was not this is how we do it we just go you know there's there's some things we can do by faith because we have faith for it and there's yeah. some things we do because we yielded and we didn't have faith yeah. we just said i don't get it i don't i don't know how it's gonna work but i'll just say yes <laughs> and that's exactly what that season was it was like one thing after another and we would pray about it and god would say do that yes 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 i'm calling you to all these things and usually i hear him saying no <laughs> no cut it all back and only do this and focus here but that particular season that you caught me in he was like yes and yes and yes and yes and i'm like he's like you're gonna see you can't do this without me and and when we know that, we yeah. see miracles happen, and it's all his glory in our own mind. You know, people might see it, and they say, oh, look how cool you are, like you're saying. Yeah. I want to work as hard as you are. But in my mind, I know I could never have done that on my yeah. own. So I know it was God. It was just me saying yes. Okay, if you say yes, I can do it. If you don't, I if you didn't say yes, I would drown. Yeah. <laughs> I would totally be drowning right now. But that's the key is knowing that you can't do anything apart from him, and with him, all things are possible. Yeah. <laughs> And it's so funny how earlier you said, like, there's not really a key to success. There's so many times that people are like, I want to teach you how to become successful, how to be a billionaire, how to be a millionaire, how to start your company. That module is not going to fit everybody's life. But I feel like when you share it in Christ and it all comes from scripture, like you're doing with Reflect Love Back, that applies for everybody. Like a good, solid theology is going to be the best thing that someone can encounter. And the fact that you're doing it morning and evening I believe is going to really, really encourage a lot of people, help them grow in their faith. And with it being a 12-week devotional series, it's amazing. You've got the journal to go along with it. You've got a writing notebook to go along with it. You've got the album that just came out, which I love personally. And I was telling the guys earlier, like, I would not be doing Trevor Talks. I would not be doing Starting Fear as a Liar clothing brand, writing a book. I wouldn't be doing any of this. And I literally believe that you and Josh had a lot to do with that just y'all taking the time out of your busy schedule to meet with me, to talk with me, even on the phone, like FaceTime, just encouraging me to get back into it because I dropped ministry. I dropped all my social media. I dropped everything that I was doing because anxiety had like taken me over. And the encouragement and everything that y'all helped pour back into me is why I'm here doing a festival. So why I'm back out on the road, I'm able to do TV, radio, like all that couldn't have happened without that. And I'm, I'm not just saying that, like, I truly mean that. And I can only imagine what this 12-week devotional series is going to do for everybody. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us and um, let us know exactly what's going on in your life and with we'll Reflect Love Back. I personally love the series. I love the album. I love all the books. I've read them all. And after I read them, I give them to other people to read and hope it encourages them. But is there anything else you want to add? Well, I was going to say that you with what you're talking about with your own story and so many people, you know, struggle with, with that anxiety and, and, and feeling like overwhelmed and just realizing sometimes God does cost to rest. And then other times he's like, you know, we recognize like with me going on stage, I never had self-confidence. And a lot of people are like, you know, in this generation, this age, they're, they're always like, Oh, you should have self-confidence. Like that's the most important thing. But really that's, that never helped me. <laughs> I always had God confidence. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but it it's, it's absolutely takes away the pressure of worrying what the people think. Because if I go out and I have no voice, but God said, go sing, which has happened hundreds of times, by the way. He's like, go sing. And I don't have a voice. I can know that if it comes out of my mouth and it sounds like garbage, it's on him. Yeah, he told me. Well, it's your fault. But usually when I sound the worst is when people come up to me the most and be like, you sound better than I ever heard you. And it is a miracle to my own mind. So then I know it's his glory. And so when I have God confidence, if they criticize me, I know I said yes. So 
I, I don't have to worry about their criticism either. So you don't worry about the praise. You don't worry about the criticism mm -hmm. when it's God confidence. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about taking yeah. it on yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's such a freedom in what you're saying about being able to say yes. And then when, when you get overwhelmed and to recognize that's okay, you know, humi whatever humbles us. Mm -hmm. You know, like a right, a fool that hates correction, but a, a wise man, he loves it. And so we can take it as correction in some ways and be like, you know, if this humbles me to where I have to depend on God, then I'm thankful, you know? Yeah. And that's what I see, I see in you. You know, you're just yeah. such a thankful, like grateful, appreciative, you know, individual. I just think that's really lacking today is such a bright light to be thankful. I appreciate you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Reflect Love Back is available everywhere. You can go to reflectloveback.com to get the 12-week devotional series, uh, the Google Play Store, Apple iTunes, uh, Apple Music, YouTube. Find Reflect Love Back. Lacey, it's been such a pleasure to talk with you, and thank you so much.